some people. Sometimes I feel like, you know, God, here I am again. <laughs> You're not the first. You're not going to be the last. But isn't he able? Praise God. I'm so thankful to be here in church today with friends. And I consider all of you my friends and many of you I've known for a long, long time. <clears throat> but I haven't known many of you as long as I've known this guy and his wife, <laughs> Carol and Vesta. Known for a long, long time. Uh, we worked together in Edgewood Assembly of God back in the early, late 80s, early 90s. But even before that, he was, my dad married them um, way before that. <laughs> and so uh, known them for a long time. And when they showed up earlier this year, just made such a difference in our church and in my life mm -hmm. to have them show up. Like a lot of friends that said, hey, look, we just want to encourage you. You're not done yet, but job well done. <laughs> Thank you so much, Carolyn Betsy. Mm -hmm. You have encouraged me tremendously. And Brad, Lori, God, my, all you guys. Should I just call out everybody now because it wouldn't take that long? But all of you guys that have encouraged me so much, I appreciate you. Uh, what a blessing it is for Brad to preach last week when I had to be out of town. Appreciate your prayers for our friend. They've known Don and Kimberly. In fact, grew up on Bar Street. Uh, so Carol's known him for longer than I have. Uh, but we appreciate your prayers. And Carol, come and preach, brother. I'm so thankful for you being here. And I know God's put a message on your heart. Come on up. get excited and slap my chest, this thing's going to sound like an explosion. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Jeff, for the opportunity. Um, appreciate getting to share. Always enjoy sharing the word, especially uh, being in church and, and loving on and being loved on by y'all, our church family, and we are grateful for the privilege. We love y'all and appreciate the, the opportunity and, and uh, the encouragement yourselves and the fellowship, you know, a hug, a handshake, and uh, how's your week, and praying better for next week, and those things are important. That's like, you know, uh, baby steps along, and so we're grateful as well. Today, you know, they, they talk about us old folks, and sometimes we're on delayed reaction. Well, I want to talk about Thanksgiving. Is that delayed? Did, didn't we just do that? Well... Listen, if you've ever heard any preacher worth his salt, they'd stand in the pulpit and say, Thanksgiving is more than one day. Thanksgiving should be all year. Have, have you ever heard that? Oh, yes. I bet I've said it every year for 40 years at least. But I'm going to give you all a reprieve. When I left youth ministry and went to pastor uh, my, in my first assignment, my very first Thanksgiving service, I preached why does God bless all the wrong people? <laughs> that, I'm kidding. No, really, that was the title, but there was, it, it went a little deeper in the weeds than that. It basically, as I started learning and loving the Lord, learning of the Lord and, and loving Him and growing in Him, He taught me some things about who he is and what he does and what he gives. And, and, and so the process becomes who we are, mm -hmm. not a one time a year or a designated timed event. And so I want to talk today about the resounding gratefulness. And, you know, we all are grateful. We've said it. We've celebrated Thanksgiving. I'm sure there was a prayer around the, 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 the dinner table. And, and, you know, we all look back and say, well, Lord, thank you for who you are, what you've done, what you've given, how you've blessed us. We're reminded, and we always say, Lord, thank you for our family and for our blessings and for every provision. And thank you for your gifts and your goodness. And, Lord, thank you for our relationship with you and thank you for our relationship with Jesus and with the Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you for your word. You do thank you for his word, don't you? Amen. Lord, thank you for the gospel. My son in law way says that the gospel reaches into the depths of places. It goes into the unknowns of all of our hearts and lives. And I love Todd's song about 
Come to the table. There will be nobody to turn you away. Amen. Wow. Lord, thank you for reminders like that. So thank you for the gospel. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the church. And that list goes on and on and on. I believe that our relationship with God helps us to grow in our gratefulness and it becomes a lifestyle. Have you ever thought of that? To wake up every day and thank the Lord for something. To wake up every day and say, God, you've done this. Or listen, I am so naive and small-minded. Sometimes I get on a long stretch and I'll set my car at just the right speed and hit every red light on green and say, get all the way to the end of number four, five, or six. I used to do that in Calhoun all the time. I'd get to the far end and say, thank you, Lord. I know you just did that. <laughs> I know you just did that. Hey, y'all, in all of our years, you know I've always let Vesta pray over my messages, and so I know that it's it's not proper to walk away from the camera, but she's back there, and so I'm going to walk away. And so whatever comes across that screen, if anybody calls the church and said, I want to complain, that's <laughs> unprofessional that he stepped away. Well, there's a phone number. It's called 1-800-SOMEBODY. <laughs> call somebody you know I don't even know who's those letters who what that number would represent but 1-800 call somebody I'll be right back <laughs> she's I don't have on a tie but she's gonna pray it into this tie father we thank you for this day again Lord we thank you for your a blessing God we are truly grateful thank you for this church family, this body of believers today, God, that you have so blessed us to be a part of. Father, we thank you again for this time in your word. We pray that you would bless your message and your messenger. Send your word forth once again with power and authority. Yeah. And God, one more time, would you open our ears to hear and open our hearts to receive all that you have for us today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 In our gratefulness, where we stop and take the time and say, Lord, I know that you've done this. You've intervened. You've, you've, you've provided for us. You've, you've done these things, the things we've prayed for a long time. And God, you brought an answer, and it may not have come as fast as we wanted or exactly shaped like we wanted it. But Lord, nonetheless, we know that you are God. You are our supreme and you are in control. And so with all things in your power, because you love us, you're our father and you provide for us, Lord, all year long. Y'all, that's going to stick in your mind. You're going you're gonna to wake up tomorrow and say, I'm going to praise the Lord because Carol said I had to. <laughs> Lord, we are grateful. And you know, it doesn't take a whole lot to stop and thank the Lord for something or someone or or to be the blessing, whatever God's poured to you, that you pour to somebody. Y'all, that's how we're learning and growing. So what God's put in us, we have something we can give. Yes. And you know how you're conscious of it? In your worship and your praise. Wow. We live in an amazing world. We have so much or so many things that help us supposed to make life easier. As such, well, I will tell you this. I, we have a, a friend that we pastored in Thomasville many years ago. He's a, he's a major for the police department there now. And Wade Glover, we used to say, what in the world did we do before computers? And you'd hear Wade Glover all over Thomasville, Georgia. He'd say, better. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that glue was invented in 1750? Did you know that vacuum cleaners were invented in 1901? I want, I want a self-propelled vacuum. I need, I need, mm. Corn flakes invented in 1906. You're going to sleep better tonight knowing that. Aluminum foil in 1910. 1947, when Tupperware was invented, you sleep better knowing that. And I've got two nuggets to go with that. Did you know that missing socks in the dryer turn into Tupperware bowls without lids? <laughs> Count them up. See, if you're missing this many socks and you've got this many Tupperware bowls. Listen, we collect Tupperware without lids. 
And I got, but I got one more to tell you. There's a Thai restaurant right across the street from the Burger King over off of Riverside. A few weeks back, Brooke and, uh, and, and Paige and Olive and Jalen uh, were here and Jalen went to the PK retreat. Well, us and the girls, very rare that we're just us together. And so the guys weren't around and so we went to eat Thai food and they serve in little, really nice heavy duty black bowls with nice heavy duty lids. Y'all, we still have our bowls and lids, and they are awesome. I told that I said, we've got to go back so we can get more bowls and get a full set. <laughs> Did you know uh, McDonald's was started in 1954? Oh, Lord. Not my favorite place, but I did a helpful hint there. Remote control was invented in 1956. You want things to go good in your house? You make sure mama has that remote control before you get into your recliner. See? Life is great, especially when we have the remote control. <laughs> Ralph Waldo Emerson, author, poet, philosopher. This, this is neat. You know how you have something in your mind and it's there and prevalent and as time rolls on, we just kind of, we kind of move beyond it and we, we forget about it or we're separated from it and we're, we're sidetracked and we can do that in a whole year. Isn't it amazing? We thank the Lord for things this year into next year at Thanksgiving and we hadn't thought to thank him for it all year long. Okay, move on, Carol. You, you said all that. Emerson said, if the stars only came out one night a year, everyone would gaze upon them, but not nearly as many because they're so common of an event. He says the things we keep alive by being grateful. Let that sink for just a second. If we only saw stars once a month or once a quarter, everybody would spend the evening out in the yard checking out the stars, but because they're out almost every night. Well, they, they probably are out. We just don't see them because of cloud coverage. But did you hear about the two hunters? You know, there's foolishness in, in every sermon, so I'm going to get all mine out of the way first, okay? <laughs> two hunters walking through a field, and here comes a raging bull. That bull's after them just lickety-split. They're running full speed, and one looks at the other and says, throw us up a prayer. And he says, I can't. They run a bit farther, and the guy looks back at him and says, I'm telling you, throw us up a prayer. That bull's getting closer. He's closing in. And the other guy says, okay, it's the only one I know. And he says, Lord, we are truly thankful for these gifts we're about to receive. <laughs> no, I didn't write it. I just repeat them. <laughs> Luke chapter 17. I want to look at this scripture and I want to talk to you just a few minutes about resounding gratefulness. You know, when the Lord's done something, do y'all remember popcorn testimonies on Wednesday night? Remember when, when the, the handful would show up on a Wednesday night and somebody would testify and somebody else would pop up right behind them? Or when Brother Morris, many years ago, we used to, we could testify and then we could pick the person supposed to testify behind us. You pick the most unsuspecting person and they look like they're going to choke to death and choke to get out. But you could point to the next person and they'd stand up and testify. Y'all, we were reminded of the good things of God when we heard it coming from other people. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. God's done this. He's healed this one. He's saved this one. There's a miracle in my life. There's a miracle in our family. There's a miracle in our church. There's a miracle in our city. Those things spoken and remembered. Luke chapter 17, start at verse 11. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the, mid, the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was, as they went, 
they were cleansed. Put those two together. As they went, they were cleansed. In, in my finite mind, I just have this thought. He said, go. They turned on heels and went. And as they're walking, as they're going, as they're moving out of their faith and out of their obedience to what the master just spoke, they turned on heels, walked away, and their, their, the, the, the fingers uh, and toes that had literally rotted off from infection were beginning to grow back. The, the, the rotten raw skin was being, being replaced, and, and they were being made whole as they went out of their own obedience to the speaking of the Lord. Number 15, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned, if I say one of them, them. y'all, that's the message. Mm -hmm. The resounding gratefulness out of the ten, the one, mm -hmm. he comes back, when he saw that he was healed, returned, and with a loud voice, he glorified God. And he fell down on his face, at his feet, on his face, at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Where are, where, were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? Hold on to the word Samaritan and foreigner. I want to tell you about that. And he said to him, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Well, if, if, you've, if you've paid much attention in the scripture, when Jesus traveled, and here in this trek, he's going from Galilee to Jerusalem, most people, especially of Jewish descent, they would go down and around and go back up and cross the Jordan River. They wouldn't go through Samaria because the Jews and the Samaritans had bad blood between them. Well, if you've done a little history check, I did a history check so I can tell you what that meant. Jesus called him a, a foreigner. Jesus went through Samaria where nobody else would go. You know why? Because when the Jews were turned over into captivity to King Nebuchadnezzar, the elderly and the sickly couldn't go. And so there were actually Jews that stayed to attend to them. So when the Samaritans, when King Nebuchadnezzar, he begins to reportion the land and he's giving a, a healthy, prosperous land. He gives the Jewish land to the Samaritans and they go moving in and there's Samar uh, Jewish people still there. Well, after a long while, they begin to intermarry. And the, so you see the bad blood? The Jewish people are saying, we're purebred Jews. And they, when the, the, the people from Samaria that had intermarried and interbred with the, the, uh, the Samaritans and the Jews, they came to help when the Jews were released. They were going to help rebuild Jerusalem. And did you know that the Jews, God's chosen, turned and looked at them? They called them half-breeds, rejected them, and said, go away. We don't want your help. So here's Jesus. I told you all that to say so you'd see the validity. Jesus went through Samaria. First of all, he ain't scared. <laughs> Can you imagine? He knew. Even in his journey, he had to go through Samaria. I can just hear Jesus, my favorite line, it must needs be. <laughs> Jesus wasn't afraid of the fact that even though there was bad blood, he knew that deep within, that gospel was going to go to hidden places. That gospel, there was coming a time when he would give his life for the very same people that his people rejected, called them half-breeds and said, go away, we don't even want your help. Jesus says to him, here's one man, he's a Samaritan, he's not even of the Jewish faith, he's just been healed, and he's the only one that has come back. To, to give praise and to worship and say thank you for healing me. He knew it as soon as he turned and walked that Jesus was healing him and he comes back to say I want to express my gratitude. I've come to say thank you. I've come to worship you. That bowing, that homage, that falling on his face before the Lord. Y'all, that wasn't anything that he took lightly. Can I just submit to you today? It wasn't anything Jesus took lightly. He says, look at this man. 
we've, we've cast them away. The Jewish and the Samaritans have been enemies forever, arch rivals, if you please. And Jesus draws attention and says, he's a foreigner. He's not even from this land. That's right. That's right. There's a whole lot to be said for adoption and grafting in. Here, I don't have a PowerPoint, but if you're writing, I have, uh, that's sweet. Besta went to get us the bulls and she brought me a bulletin back. <laughs> Let that sink for a minute. <laughs> my notes, my iPad, I'm going to take the bulletin because it's got a beautiful picture on the front, and I'm sure it's got pretty words inside. <laughs> no, I'm not picking on my wife. I am going home with her today. <laughs> You've got ten men in the same spot with the very same disease. Mm -hmm. Leprosy in those days was an ex extreme, very rare form of psoriasis. The infection would go so deep, and it's not like a, a skin infection and irritation that we know now because we've come a long way and medication does so much and, you know, probably not a complete cure, but, but close enough to say they've, they've uh, uh, eradicated the majority of it. So the kind of, of, of um, um, leprosy from biblical times, very rare to the point of what we know now. But if you've ever seen it in foreign countries and you've seen people with their, their fingers uh, uh, gone, just where the infection eats away and it eats bone and eats skin, and can't even fathom the, the painfulness and uh, the deformities that they live with. Well, in biblical times, when the priest would recognize that people had, the, the guys had sores and such. They were castigated, y'all. They were isolated to a, a compound. They lived in a place away from society. They weren't allowed in public. They didn't get invited to the gala events. And they, in other words, they literally, all they had were uh, in their lives were other leprosies, lepers with the very same problems, with the sickness and the disease that was literally destroying and probably even killing them. So here you see these guys, they've got this infectious disease, they're cast away, away from people, away from their families, you know, uh, the whole nine yards, they've, everything is taken away from them because of the disease. And, and in, by law, People aren't allowed to touch them and be near them. And so they would stand off to the side at a far distance. And if anybody were in the vicinity, they had to cry out, unclean. I'm unclean. In other words, they had to declare themselves, don't come over here. Don't come over here. All ten of them, they hear this man Jesus. They see Jesus walking. No doubt they've heard that he's coming through the land, that there are miracles. He shows up in their compound. And the scripture says that they all went to him or went towards him. And they cried out and said, Jesus, Master. Y'all, there's an identity there. When they said Master, they're saying, they, as they said, Jesus, they're saying, we know who you are. And when they called him master, they said, we're out of our own submission. We recognize you as our master. You're the healer. You're the son of God. If there's anybody that can do anything for us, it's you. Amen. And they cry out and they said, would you have pity? Would you have mercy on us? What you're feeling for us, would you reach out? Would you speak that word? Would you speak the health of heaven into our lives today? I think to myself that they all said the same prayer. Jesus had compassion for the whole lot. Everybody say mercy. mercy. The biblical translation for the word mercy, it means having resources to meet a need and doing that. Jesus showed 
mercy. He had the resources. He was, he is the resource. Amen. So they prayed the same prayer and they said, Lord, out of your compassion and your pity. Now see, sympathy is a feeling. Jesus took the pity, that depth of sorrow he saw for what these guys were living in and what they were feeling. And literally out of their suffering, out of pity for them, he spoke in his mercy. He provided the need or he provided healing. He provided the resource. <clears throat> Jesus told them, he says, go and show the priest. Mm -hmm. Go and show the priest that you're healed, that your skin is clean, that there are no sores. And uh, Because basically the priest was the one to, to check them and to declare their leprosy. And so, you know, you're, you're separated from the, the town. And so then it was, even in that, he says, go to the priest and have yourself declared clean. Mm -hmm. You know, I love the fact that even as Jesus is our high priest, and we can go to him and he declares our cleansing from sin and our deliverance mm -hmm. from sin. The priest, our high priest. So not only as he gives them the instructions, but I, and I told you that before, I love that as they're walking away, they're recognizing I'm different. I'm not in pain. My, my skin is, is being restored. My body is being restored. Y'all, can you imagine in that very moment if they've been isolated for any length of time, away from family, away from uh, uh, any uh, modern, or I say modern conveniences in those days, you know, they, uh, they might have had two car Two, car, two camel garages, but it wasn't air conditioning for sure. But they were isolated and separated. And can you just imagine that Jesus is restoring unto them? Yes. You know, our perception. Our perception, our, our perspective out of our relationship the more we walk with the Lord, the closer we are, the more we recognize the depth of his love and all that he gives us and wants to give us and all that he does for us and wants to do for us. Our accepting and our, our, our worship to him, the Lord, you are so good and for which I'm grateful. Amen. I know you've heard of chicken soup for the soul. Well, there's one for chicken soup for the soul at work written by Francie Schwartz. She tells of a story of a guy named Jerry who was beaten badly in a, a robbery gone bad. And he's headed to surgery and the, he's, he's a lighthearted kind of fellow. And the doctors, uh, they're asking him, are you allergic to anything? And he said, yes, needles. <laughs> After he comes out of surgery and the, it, they already knew the surgery was good, but it was going to take a long recovery. And they said, how are you today? And his response was, if I were any better, I'd be twins. If I were any better, I'd be twins. Y'all, my dad sits and makes stuff up like that all the time. He says that a lot, stuff just like that all the time. And I'm thinking, he's 95, he spends the majority of time at home, he's got a cat and a dog, and he, he's married, but his wife has children, a uh, 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 a sick son, a sickly son there in LaGrange, and so she's birthed us back and forth an awful lot. So my dad at 95, and, and, and every time you talk to him, it's it's fun, it's laughter, it's, it's uplift, and uh, you know, he may tell me the woes, and he can memorize everything wrong with everybody else in my family, but he never whines about anything with him, and I'm thinking, you know, that, 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 Perception and perspective, it's like, wow, life is good, we're breathing, we're kicking, let's, let's, let's enjoy what God has done for us. I think about the things that I've learned. When I was a kid, I was quick to receive, enjoy, let go of, and move on. Forget about, separate, isolate from, 
Have you, you may have done it yourself, which probably all of us have, where the Lord's blessed us, he's done something for us, and it's like we're almost a little selfish. We grab the gift and run, and then in a little while, we come running back, we want another gift. But our appreciation for the first one or the first hundred, we tend to slack off on, we tend to move from. Listen, in, in ministry of any kind, it's easy to run across people where you have the whole prayer chain. You call out the citywide effort. Everybody pray for me. Woe is me. It's terrible. It's awful. I need a blessing from God. We pray down heaven. They get their blessing. And in three months, what blessing? Okay. I'm meddling. I just wanted to tell you all that. <laughs> when I was younger, I tended not to appreciate as much. And as I've gotten older... I, I, I want to call myself grateful. I want the Lord to look at me and see that, that I, I, I not only desire, but I enjoy walking in his favor. So to do that, I need to be one that I can express my gratitude, that I can run, I can be the one if need be. If I'm the only one, Carol's going to go back and say, Lord, I want to thank you. I see what you've done. I see how you've intervened. I, I, I see uh, uh, magnificent changes. I see provision. Lord, I'm grateful for your favor. And so those are the things I don't ever want to take for granted. I don't want to be a part of the nine and run away from it and say, you know what? I'll take the blessing. See you. I'll take the blessing. See you. I think Jesus probably had a tender heart right here. He's got one that's come back to say thank you. It is like he's, he's drawing attention. See this one? Who is this man? Well, he's from Samaria. He's, he's not even a Jew. But yet he recognizes the power that's touched him. And he's come to bring right. worship and appreciation. And I just simply love the fact that Jesus isolated that very story. And when you put it all together and see that the Jews, and you, you've often wondered, you know, they, they didn't want to be around when Jesus ministered to the lady from Samaria at the well. You know, it, there were some that the, the scoffers and the naysayers, that would have been awful. But y'all, in his mercy and in his grace, Remember when Jesus told the disciples, he says, you're going to, go, after I'm gone, you're going to preach in Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Don't you think it is important and noteworthy that he would include Samaria? He's telling all of his, his, his family, his disciples, and all of his Jewish uh, uh, counterparts, he said, the gospel is for everyone and it's going to go here and it's go there through Samaria and it's going to keep going all the way around the world. He was inclusive and he didn't isolate. Amen. There's a message in that. And so when I think that he included me, he hasn't isolated me. You know, there have been times I've prayed some prayers and I look back now and I'm thinking, Lord, thank you that you didn't. Thank you that you said no. Thank you that I was young and, and silly and prayed for some things. And Lord, I'm glad you didn't answer all those prayers because I, I'd be dead by now. Yes. You know, I'd be wiped out. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be half crazy or just uh, bad because out of my own selfishness. But as I've grown and I look and see and say, Lord, you've been so good to me. Yes. You've been so good to me. Don't let me move beyond a Thanksgiving season. And you know what's sweet about Thanksgiving? We're going to move from Thanksgiving straight into Christmas. And here Christmas presents us a Savior. Yes. So our Thanksgiving continues. That's a good spot for an amen right there. Yes. So our Thanksgiving continues. He's sending us a Savior, the same one that's going to give his life for salvation to the whole world. Amen. Some Jesus called him a, a foreigner, and the, I, you just you can just hear the disciples. Don't no no no. Don't have anything to do with him. Don't you don't you see? And Jesus says, "Yeah, I see. I appreciate that he's grateful." 
If the Lord spoke into your life today and says, I want you to know that I see the things that you're grateful for and I see that, that you say thank you a lot. Do you see that that opens the windows of heaven that the Lord literally out of your relationship as you're saying thank you, you're acknowledging and you're recognizing the Father, your heavenly Father, opens up the windows of heaven and pours out blessing and faith, highly favored and blessed of the Lord. Amen. Wow. Psalm 28, let's read there and I'll be through. Psalm 28. Start at verse 6 and 7. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exalts. And with my song, I give thanks to him. Amen. I give thanks. Right there where you are, would you just say thank you, Lord? Father, we just give you praise today and thank you for who you are and all that you do. All that you provided for us, that which you poured into our lives and the spiritual things. God, you bring growth and strength and nurture in us every day and we are so grateful. Thank you for Jesus today. Thank you for our Savior. Thank you for the Son and all that he's provided in our salvation. God, thank you for Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us, that comforts us and teaches us. Lord, thank you for strength. Thank you for the baby steps that we make and help us, that, that you help us in growing every day, every day, and still every day. Thank you for your touch on our lives. Lord, thank you for our church and our pastors here. I pray your richest blessings on Jeff and Michelle and on Brad and, and Lori and for the praise team. God, you, you are awesome. You've set us up with worshipers and a praise team. The hand of the Lord on First Assembly Macon. Thank you. God, thank you for this congregation, for the love in our relationship, the blessing of these people, we are so grateful. We are so grateful. Thank you for every blessing. In Jesus' name.